Welcome to the online video series presented by Structure Studios. This video will explain Stage 3, Walls, Fences, and Railing. For this video, we'll set our grid to one foot and head to the Snaps menu to turn on Point, Line, and Grid. We'll also set the angle to World Angle and turn on Autocomplete. First, we'll create the wall around the property, so we want to make sure Wall is selected in the panel. We'll use the measure guide to determine our first point. Activate the measure tool and left click on the top left corner of the house. Measure down 22 feet and left click to set the distance. We now know where our wall should begin. Let's activate the line tool and left click at the end of the 22 foot measure guide to start the wall. Then move your mouse to the left 7 feet and left click. Now draw up 70 feet and left click. We want to stop our wall here. Shapes in this stage do not need to be complete to appear in 3D. To end the line segment, we can click the point we just finished or press Escape on the keyboard. The line we just drew represents the middle of the wall. The thickness of the wall is measured evenly on both sides of the line. Let's take a look at our wall in 3D by clicking the 2D 3D button at the top of the screen. By drawing the property wall in separate sections, each segment can have unique settings. We adjust the appearance of the wall in the panel. Let's set the height to 5 feet 6 inches and the thickness to 8 inches. Next, click the wall cap button. Here we can customize the cap. When we click the style button, our library will open to the cap options. Choose the style you'd like to use for this project. Select the cap and click the Insert button or double-click the preview to apply it. We can also adjust the cap width. Let's set it to 10 inches to slightly overhang the 8-inch wall. To remove the wall cap, click the X to the right of the Style button. Next, we'll adjust the pillar settings by clicking the Pillars button. To remove all pillars, we use the pillar toggle. For this wall, we'll set our pillar width to 1 foot 3 inches and the height to 5 feet 9 inches. Just like with our wall cap style, we click the cap style button to select a new style in the library and double click to apply it. You can also set the distance between each pillar with the spacing option. We'll set our spacing to 15 feet. We can also move and delete individual pillars in 3D as needed. Double click on a pillar to select it. Use the green arrow to move it to a new place on the wall and use the blue arrow to adjust the elevation. We use the same method to delete a pillar. Let's delete the pillar connected to the house. Double click the pillar and then press delete on your keyboard. We can also manually add pillars. Let's head back to 2D and add a pillar. The first step is to activate the divide tool. The divide tool lets us add points to existing lines. When we add a point to a wall, a new pillar is created. We'll add a point 8 feet down from the last point. Since we have our grid set to 1 foot, we can count 8 grid spaces to get the distance. We now have a new pillar and an 8 foot segment at the end of our wall. Later in the material stage, you can customize the appearance of the wall by applying unique materials to the wall face, cap, and pillars. Once our wall is set, we can save it as a preset in the library. With our wall selected in 2D, click the Save button in the bottom left corner. Select the Walls, Fences, and Railing category, and then the Wall Presets type. We'll name our template Paver Retaining Wall and click OK to save it. Now we'll draw the wall on the other side of the property. We'll use the Measure Guide again to mark where to start. Activate the Measure tool and left click on the top right corner of the house. Measure down 32 feet and left click to set the distance. We now know where our next wall should begin. Activate the Line tool and then left click at the end of the 32 foot measure guide to start the wall. Draw right 18 feet and left click. Then draw up 70 feet and left click. We want our wall to stop here so we'll click again. This new wall will automatically match the style of our last wall. We'll head back to 3D to see how it looks. The wall looks great, but we forgot to leave a space for the gate. Not a problem. We can also use the Divide tool to edit the wall. Let's head back to 2D to create the opening. 
The gate starts four feet away from the house. We'll count the grid spaces to get the distance. Press the letter T to activate the Divide tool. Count four spaces from the corner and left-click on the line to add a point. We need a five-foot opening, so count five more spaces and left-click again to add another point. Now we'll press Q to activate the Move tool and left-click the hollow midpoint of the new five-foot section. Once selected, the line segment turns orange. Press Delete to remove the segment and create the opening for the gate. Next, we'll add a fence along the back of the property. Press the letter A to activate the line tool. If we start drawing from our wall endpoint, we'll continue drawing the wall, so we need to start a new shape. Left-click above the wall to start the fence and draw 90 feet to the left and double-click. Now we'll switch to the Move tool and move this new segment between our walls. This technique allows us to keep this segment a separate shape and create a fence connecting the walls. Click the Fence Railing button in the panel to make this a fence. Let's take a look at our fence in 3D by clicking the 2D 3D button at the top of the screen. Now we'll open the library to see the fence options. Click on Fence Presets and apply the Iron Sphere Top by double-clicking the preview. Once a preset is applied to your shape, you can completely customize the look. Just like the walls, fences are customized in the panel. First, we'll click on the Posts button and change the height to 4 feet 7 inches and the spacing to 7 feet 2 inches. Now we'll click on Cap Style and choose the Soft Circle 1 from the library. Next, we'll adjust the pickets by clicking the Boards button. Here we can adjust the height, thickness, spacing, and elevation. We'll set the height to 4 feet 6 inches and check the Flat Board Top option. The next option is Rails. You can double-click on any rail to adjust its settings. Let's double-click the middle rail. To create a flat rail, click the X to the right of the profile. When no profile is applied, you can also set a width. For this rail, we'll apply Top Rail Contemporary by double-clicking on the preview. You can quickly add another rail with the Add Rail button. This will create an identical copy of the last rail we selected. Once the rail is added, you can modify the settings and set the elevation. We'll set the elevation of the new rail to 10 inches. Our fence looks great. Let's head back to 2D and save it to the library as a new preset. Click the Save button in the bottom left corner. Select the Walls, Fences, and Railing category, and then the Fence Presets type. We'll name our template Iron Flat Top and click OK to save it. Once the preset is added to the library, this style can be applied to any fence you draw in future projects. In this stage, you also create the railing for your stairs, decks, and balconies. We'll add a railing to our deck in the upcoming Wood Deck video. This completes instruction on walls, fences, and railing. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit structurestudios.com/help.